Michael's muted. So welcome to the DevSync for August 23rd on Monday. We're all excited to start a new week here at Mycroft. <laughs> Thanks, Chris. Uh, oh, boy. Uh, how long has it been? Um, I have been out with some medical issues. So, you know, uh, that's been fun. But um, I am back. And um, we've been making a lot of progress. Uh, so we're wrapping up right now our, uh, our first pass at, uh, the, um, at the, the essential skills. So let's go into that and see, uh, see how we're doing. Um, okay, well, uh, I'm gonna have to jump here in a few minutes. So I will okay. go first. Um, and a couple of things not related to that, but just real quick, I um, had updated the instructions for our dev kit, because we're shipping those now, and they have uh, anyone out there that's getting one now, it's going to be slightly different than the one in the, that we shipped in, in earlier in the year. Uh, the speaker drivers are slightly different manufacturers, so there's a little bit of a, a, a different assembly process of new parts. So I got that updated. Um, but then uh, the rest of the time I was back on the GUI stuff. Uh, Chris and I have been talking a little bit about the home screen, and um, we kind of mentioned that earlier. So I, I um, most of it was just little tweaks and stuff that uh, that Chris brought to my attention. Um, but one of the big things was was how we were dealing with this uh, future notification uh, system that we might use. I'm oh, sorry, I'm making that. <laughs> I'm getting that. Two things confused. Not the notification in terms of what we're talking about. The um, the uh, going into you know wake word detection. You know, we're doing the edge light and that kind of thing. Um, so I think. I, I think I've got some work to do to describe kind of how I think it should work. Um, but uh, the, um, the short order is I don't think we need to change anything. <laughs> um, so it, it's, it's kind of the way the layers work with the um, wallpaper and then the card delegate on top of it. And then this um, kind of future idea of, of using that edge 32 pixel gutter that's not implemented yet. Um, but anyway, I want to document that and we can talk about it if that makes uh, sense to you guys. Um, so I started working on that. Um, so anyway, that all sounds very vague, but uh, it'll make, it'll hopefully make more sense tomorrow. But anyway, that's, um, that's what I've been up to. All right. Uh, thanks, Derek. Um, so uh, how about uh, let's um, go through the uh, the the skill table here that we've been uh, keeping track of things on and uh, just see where things are. Um, I think I could probably share my screen. Let's see if that works. All right. So let's talk about uh, the date skill. Um, how are we doing on the date skill? All good. It's all good. <laughs> okay. I think it's done. Yeah, um, <laughs> I thought I, I thought I greened that. I'm a little surprised that's. There we go. I just needed to refresh my. Ah, uh, okay. There we go. That's better. That looks nice. Cool. Yeah, this is look. This looks a lot better. Okay. <laughs> so uh, last uh, we checked in, uh, it was not deployed on the latest build. Has that changed? No. No. Okay. Um, so for the date and time, for the date time and the date time skills, we need to kind of do all those three together. Um, and they were hinging on the home screen skill because it's kind of using the date time skill at the moment. So I think Chris will talk about that. Got it. Okay. Well, let's go jump down to the home screen then, Chris. How's that? Yeah, so um, that's what I've been working on for the last couple of days. Um, right now, it does actually do some imports from a date time skill. So I think those three skills are just going to have to, when I'm done with the home screen skill, we're going to have to have a coordinated effort to, you know, make everything the right way <laughs> that we want it to be. Um, so and I can work with, with Gez on that. Um, i got a couple more days of work on the home screen, I think. Um, maybe just one more day. Right now, it's got the... Uh, 
So it's got a date, a time, and the weather on it. Um, the date and time are not coming from the skill API. They are, I just coded it right in there because it's not pulling anything that's, I mean, the, the, the time is formatted differently than the time skill is and the date is formatted differently. So there wasn't really any overlap there. Um, so I just put the code to populate those right, right smack that in the skill, um, which wasn't much code really. And the weather skill, I, um, I didn't, so I didn't use the, the existing skill API for that either. I just sent a message bus message every 15 minutes that says, hey, there's new weather, go pick it up. Um, so I think you still need to talk more about that because I'm not sure everything we've done there is completely necessary because I just proved that it's not. <laughs> um, so uh, I don't have to find a session for this very moment, but, um, so what's left to do is to get an alarm indicator on there when there's an alarm outstanding. Um, and um, I think one other thing that's probably worth doing is right now there is a, in the settings, in the skill settings for the home skill, there's a, a text field where you can type in the name of the, your wallpaper. And there's like five existing wallpapers that are in there that unless you know, where to look in the skill for which wallpapers exist. You wouldn't have no any idea what to type in there. Um, so uh, I may have, I want to somehow address that as well. Um, and then I'll be, I think I'll be done with the home screen skill. Okay. Um, you are the, the, for the, the graphics uh, side of yeah. thing. Okay. Yeah. Um, let's see, what else are you working on since we're here? Uh, the timer uh, looks like we're still waiting for the marketplace approval on the timer. The timer is, uh, I think we decided that we need a 20.21.2.1 release that right. includes the VK stuff, and which we haven't done yet. And once that's out there, then we can address, you know, making the timer or making the changing the, the skill um, VK test so the timer will pass. And then we can roll that in. Okay. And that's, that, that the status on that hasn't changed. Gotcha. Okay, so the uh, we haven't scheduled that work on the VK test suite yet to allow minor releases. Um, well, the first thing we need to do is actually have a minor release to to look at. <laughs> hmm. um, so we, we're still on twenty dot twenty one dot two dot zero. So um, okay, so, yeah, we at least need the changes I need in core. We need those into a minor release before we can even address that. Okay, so we've got to we've got to plan that out then. Yeah. Um, all right, let's see what else have we got you down here for. I think that's the end of your, oh, no, you're on the pairing skill and that one's been done for a while. Yeah, uh, and really I'm, I'm gonna go through all these, the GUI as part of the sprint we're doing, what we're on now. I'm gonna, after the home screen, I'm gonna, I'll be with Derek and we'll make sure that all the essential skills have their screens using the the uh, framework that we've put, we've laid down for Right. Screen design. And technically, making sure they all have a proper uh, graphics interface isn't necessarily part of this sprint. So, but that's the next sprint, right? Oh, so. we're already talking about the last. Okay, I, I'm because we're we're kind of in between. I thought we got. I'm already starting to start the GUI sprint. So. Oh yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. Technically, <laughs> we split the we split the work across two things. But I definitely want to close out the sprint that says. All the all the skills have reached this level of yes, yes. functionality, right? So, and the graphics doesn't have to be part of that. So, I think we need True. to prioritize the work that gets us to the at least the audio interface working properly um, so before we move on to doing the graphics stuff. Yeah. So, on that note, the date and time skills. Since I'm not, oh, never mind. We already talked about that. Carry on. Okay. Uh, okay, so then it sounds like, as much of a pain in the ass as this is, we need to make that uh, minor release part of the audio, uh, part of Sprint 21, effectively, and fixing the VK tests part of Sprint 21 in order to really be able to close that out, right? Okay. Um, I mean, since our sprint definitions right now are sort of arbitrary and using the word sprint isn't really terribly applicable, uh, I think that's fine. 
Um, we should we should go ahead and do that. Um, all right, uh, Ken, let's jump over to Ken and see uh, how we're doing things on things here. Uh, the common query Q and A has been complete for a while. It's deployed on latest. Uh, has that made it up to stable yet? I don't think we've deployed anything up to stable in a while, right? Because um, well, anything in the marketplace is just deployed on stable because it automatically updates. So common Q and A. Uh, I can't even remember if anything changed in there. Did it, Ken? Or was that was that one of the ones that didn't have any issues? I think no. I mean, I think common Q and A was almost like an umbrella holder for yeah. converting things that had to go into common Q and A. Yeah, so I think you could call that deployed unstable. Gotcha. Okay. Um, and how about the Wikipedia? We had some tests failing when last we talked. Yeah, I forget. Was that so? That was Thursday. Maybe I was out Friday. So uh, ah, okay. There, uh, there was a fix. There's a fix I have for that fixes that. It basically came down to uh, replacing the timeouts in the VK test. Uh, wait for dialogue to complete stuff uh, with actual code that you know interrogates the message bus. Uh, Gaz, did I ever put that PR up or not? Mm, not that I've seen. It's one file. Okay, so I probably need to put that up there. Uh, it's just a file. It's a modification to the VK tests. Okay. I think the stuff. Uh, oh, I'll have to no, do some I more remember. testing because the stuff that I'm I saw sorry. was was not. I, I'm VK sorry. Testing. I remember. I remember now. My mistake. But we discussed this. You told me to keep it in the wiki skill that uh, it's not something that we wanted to put into the VK tests right now, which is fine as long as we clean out the cache after each one because DuckDuckGo will need the same thing. Um, and I can just put it in the individual skills. But I thought I submitted a PR against the wiki skill with this minor addition. Is that not the case? Uh, I'd, have to go, I'd have to go and double check. Yeah, look at the wiki skill. There should be a new uh, PR. And, and if you don't see one, then just let me know. OK. But I mean, the, the stuff that I was seeing failing in the wiki skill too was was beyond just the VK tests. It was, um, you know. There was, there was two tests that failed. The tests that failed both failed for the same reason, and that's because they didn't detect the audio system stop from the dialogue playback. Uh, and that was because they either got there too fast or whatever, or they missed uh, something. When I modified the wiki skill steps file and changed that code from timeout and then check the, and then timeout to making it more robust, all the tests passed fine. Yeah, but the, the issues that I, I had were like, you know, asking about one thing and getting a completely different, uh, you know, a completely incorrect answer about a that completely is different topic. That is correct because they were running before they were, before the dialogue stopped, so they were picking up bits and pieces of the dialogue. Plan. But but this was outside of a VK test. It was just you know like using the device with the. With All right, the let me put it this way. I have a modification for the wiki steps file that when I make, and when you commit that PR and you run the tests, they shouldn't fail. But I'm not. I'm not talking about the test, though. I'm talking about, like, you know, whether whether test pass or not is is useful, and hopefully the test is is an accurate reflection of the of the normal environment. But if I then use the device with the, you know, if I then use the skill just as a, a normal human, and it tells me about the Chrome browser or whatever it was. Um, oh, so, so let me make sure I understand where you're coming from. So what you're saying is this is not VKit that has oriented. You found a bug in the wiki skill. Yes. Yeah. Ah, well, just uh, go ahead and create a Jira ticket and commit that and submit that bug or assign that bug to me so I can look at it. All right. I thought I did that, but I will go and double check. That's why I know about the wiki skill, Mike. Um, all right. Well, that sounds clear as mud. Um, 
So, no, I think, so, so I think there was two yeah. issues there is the problem. So I think the first yeah. issue is that two of the VK tests were failing. I believe that's that's true. Right. And so um, when I went and analyzed that, um, I found yeah, that. No. I, I, I get it. I understand. I, I just want to. There was also manual testing that was done, right? And that right. Was, so, so that some was, legit bugs were found. So there were two separate issues. There is the point. Yeah. Sorry about the airplane. Uh, right. Okay. Well, yeah. That's got to be your your top priority, so we can close this uh, sprint out. Okay. Um, all right. So let's see. Uh, moving on down. It looks like we've got the Pandora. Um, uh, basically, the the demo skill, right? Um, and it says that we the PR has been reviewed, and we're we're pushing. So we should have a a somewhat functional Pandora skill in here, right? Um, it says the PR has been reviewed. That doesn't tell me what's supposed to be what's supposed to happen next. Um, all right. Well, that's your skill, so you're responsible for it. So you can can you check into that and make sure that. Uh, well, but yeah, I did. I, I pushed the PR for the Pandora skill. Now I don't know what happens after that. Okay, PR has been submitted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't reviewed. Know I reviewed it. Oh, okay. Got yeah, it. Okay. Get deployed into the marketplace or whatever. Great. Okay, so Chris Ver reviewed this the PR. Uh, did you have any? Was it accepted or not? I don't remember. I'll look down. Yeah. Pretty sure it was. It was approved with and but not merged. Trying to hit merge if it's good to go. Uh yeah. Cool. So, guys will merge. Is this new status? Uh, I think Chris is going to hit the button. It's yeah, I'm okay. there. I can just hit it now. All right, cool. Let's see. Okay, the next one is the news common play. Uh, that one's we've decided is not fixable in this sprint. Uh, so no, there's, there's sort of two two components that which relates to all those notes down the bottom. Um, the uh, like the the issue where we can't add new stations to um, to the skill settings. Like we're not going to fix that in this sprint. Um, but there were there were bugs where like you know Fox News for example just would fail playing every single time. Um, so yeah, I did a fix of that. Um, Chris reviewed it. Uh, he um, uh, came back with a bunch of with a bunch of comments, um, which were very valid. Um, and I've I've gone in and done a much bigger. Unfortunately, the comments are like not easy to address without really, you know, making the code much more much cleaner and more readable and things. So. I've, I've done a bigger refactor of the skill, which, um, <laughs> but it's in a, it's in a way better place now, um, from a completely unbiased perspective. <laughs> um, Got it. So it, it's actually still work in progress. Yeah. Yeah. But it's, it's pretty close. Yeah. I, um, all the tests are passing. Uh, I'm just doing the final, like, you know, making sure the doc strings are right and, um, replacing you know, base exceptions with like what they actually should be, um, that sort of stuff. Okay, got it. Uh, and then Derek, it says here, was reviewing the GUI for that. Is that still actually happening? I think that's all done. Is that right? The news? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, I, I had suggested these changes. Uh, I'm not sure where those are at. Um, to Aditya with the colors and whatnot. Yeah. Did he get those? Yeah, yeah. He's he's done a, a first implementation of that. Um, at the moment, it uh, he's he's got it so that you send in two different colors. Whereas I think what you were after, 
I think what you were after was sending a single color and doing an alpha channel to like um, to modify that single color so that it was consistent across all of them. Is that right? Yeah, that was kind of the idea. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you could kind of do it different. You, yeah, yeah, that's the idea. <laughs> Um, and part of the refactor is kind of setting up uh, to be easier for, for this sort of stuff as well. Um, so, uh, yeah, the, the, the GUI is not implemented yet, but it will be. Okay. I'm still, so there's one thing I still haven't, well, I don't know. Um, this may be not news related specifically, but I'm seeing a stop issue that I haven't really been able to document all that well. So. Um, I'll work on that some tomorrow. We're just not not stopping <laughs> whenever I say stop. It seems to happen most of the working the new skill. What's not stopping? Minecraft. I can't I can't get him to shut up. <laughs> what is he talking about? Well, it's typically well. It's in the new skill mostly is where I've seen it, but like I said, I haven't I haven't documented the bug very well. But um, that is, I'll work on that tomorrow. I kind of left that un incomplete last week. Now, Gaz, if I'm not mistaken, the new skill that's out there is not the one I submitted, right? It's the one that's had a lot of refactoring around of the curl stuff and the new Fox News channel fixes and things. Uh, no, the curl, the the refactored one is not is not anywhere yet um i think the one on the the one on mark two is is the um skill control version oh really i think so but... i'll be able to tell i think because i think i snuck a version number into the base class because everybody if we didn't have versions and it sounded like we wouldn't have them for several years and so i stuck one in there so i could figure out what versions of code i have running um, but I'll, I'll check that. Uh, uh, Derek, if you find a uh, bug in the news skill when you say stop, please create a JIRA ticket and assign it to me. Derek's gone. Oh, um, no. but, but yeah, we'll, uh, we'll have a look <laughs> at it. I'll consider message communicated because we didn't have an act. In the absence <laughs> of an act. I assume so. um, anyway, so yes, the, the news still will be, uh, I think it'll be done today. Is the hope. Um, okay. So I guess, in other words, I think what I heard is that the skill control new skill was committed, and any changes you're making are on top of that. Uh, well, currently, kind of yes. <laughs> As in the, the the skill control stuff was was um, injected by the um, the build process. So we're using that branch instead of the, the mainline branch. And then these changes I'm doing at the moment are on the mainline branch, but I'm going to, um, if they're accepted, then I'll rebase the, the skill control uh, branch off them so that it gets, it gets both, it will have both branches merged into one, basically. Okay. All right. Well, uh, so we're plugging along here. The it's very very close. Um, if we get the new skill done by today, then really it looks like the long pull is um, is going to be this timer thing, uh, which is an issue with a marketplace and the VK testing and all that stuff. So um, it looks like Chris, that's going to be your. Well, is that a Chris thing or a Gez thing, really? Well, releasing 20.2.1 is a guess thing, and then getting the the new Docker container out there, I can certainly do that. Okay. So um, is that something you can tackle right after this new stuff, Gez, or is it, um, uh, or do we have to wait for something else to do a, a minor release? Uh, no, it just takes a, it, it's just the, the testing part of that is the only time consuming bit. I think. Okay. Um, but yeah, we're happy to freeze, freeze call where it is at the moment and release off. Basically, if there's any if there's any PR that you think is essential to get into before the point release, then shout very soon, and I'll post that in the community as well. But I can't see that people. 
Right. Yeah. Okay, good. Um, great. So I will stop sharing this. Um, so one other thing I forgot to mention about the home screen skill. Um, there is, I, I, I'm, there's a hard coded value in the Mark II skill that looks for the um, idle.qml in the name of an idle screen. Um, I'm going to make that a little smarter because I think that's kind of a holdover from when we had idle screens and different skills and stuff. And um, now everything's named home screen. And, I, you know, so I, I don't think we want to, we want to count on that, especially not hard coding. So I, I put some logic, a couple of two or three lines of logic in there that actually looked at the registered home screens, the names of them, um, and used that as a qualifier rather than, um, you know, looking at a substring of a file name, which is probably better anyway. Okay. So that'll go. Um, out. I'll probably put that out there before I put the home screen skill out there because it's it'll it'll depend on it. <laughs> Right. Like I said, it's, it's, it's a small change, but I think a worthwhile one. Okay, so that'll be a push, uh, something you want to get into core before this point release. That's not core. That's actually in the Mark II skill. So oh, I, I, can, I can do that separately. Yeah. Okay. Doesn't require. Got it. Yeah. Okay, uh, great. So that's the status of Sprint 21. Um, anything else uh, you guys want to uh, give an update on? Um, yeah, just two things. I just checked Gez, and, and I don't think that. Um, step fix found its way into the wiki skill, so I'll put a PR together for that. And uh, to get that Jira ticket to me, I'll take a look at that and try to get that fixed as well from a manual perspective. Um, and then, Michael, um, everything you asked me today has nothing to do with what I've been working on for the last week because all this stuff's been done for a week, so I've been working on other things. If that's the thing. <laughs> yeah, well, now's the time to update us on all those things. So, well, yeah, I think Gez had something to say first. Oh, okay. Sure. Go ahead, Gez. Uh, as we I did a, um, a stable release of the Mark II image uh, yesterday, so stable devices should have updated to August 19, I think. In the... Did we get that? I saw in chat that there was some issue with the stable release. Has that, has that been addressed? Uh, it's it's an issue with the with the downloadable image for it. So it's a, it's an issue for oh. new installs. So if you don't image. have an image, it's a problem. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. existing images should update too. They, they seem to update fine, yeah. OK. Um, maybe. <laughs> Mine's still. Seems to be on the uh, June second. Oh, okay. Um, I'll go check the progress. Um, basically, I just got I've got one that's been sitting on stable, just just stays on stable and stays online, and it updated. Um, so that's my huh. my. But it could be that. Uh, well, it should have up. It should have tried to receive an update by now. Um, so I'll go and have a look at the progress and see how many of the of our you know, stable devices have actually updated and, and that sort of thing. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, that's a little mystifying. Although mine might technically have been updated to the uh, latest branch, but that should be that should have been updated to something more recent. Yeah, June June second was the previous stable, so that that sort of suggests oh, okay. that, it's, that it is there. The only thing would be if you turned off automatic updates for some reason, um, uh, which I have to also say I um, kind of haven't done that for a very long time, or have potentially never done that, and. Um, uh, the UI for that on, on Selenium worked beautifully. So if you turn off automatic updates and then an update becomes available, it, it, it provides this big green button that tells you that there are updates available and that you can click to apply them. And you click it and your device updates. So um, 
it will be very obvious if you if you um, have turned off automatic updates and there's one of them. I have not. I, I am on the automatic update path, so hmm. maybe it's just a while to roll out to me, but uh, I don't know. We can follow up on this a little later. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, so for the for new downloads at the moment, um, uh, I've, I've linked the, the last release candidate because that actually um, boots. Um, it's still, the, I've, I've experienced an issue with pairing there, but um, I'm, I'm trying to work through this issue with Panicore at the moment because um, obviously we've got like a whole bunch of dev kits going in the mail right now out to people. So I really want them to have a, a nice experience when they open their box up and build their units. So, um, yeah. All right, cool. Yeah, that's good. We've got uh, 100 dev kits going out right now, so that's good to get that up to date. Um, all right. Uh, Actually, that reminds like... me. Ken, can you send me your address if you want a dev kit? Because I don't think I got your. There's one on the I, way. I didn't give it back to you because I wasn't sure if it was that important or if it was more important to get them out into other people's hands. I mean, I'm well, fine. But We've got a stash that's reserved just for our developers. We're not okay. selling anymore, but the, the rest that we have on in stock are just for internal use. So okay. there's, there's one with your name oh, on it. Well, I, I guess I'll make that one my stable branch one and just let it automatically update and take it from there. Hmm. Yeah, I think it's All good right. to have I'll, that. Uh, yeah, I'll but yeah, you're not, you're not preventing anyone in the community or any pet, you know, anyone from getting theirs. Like, yeah. Okay. All right, I will text you my address. I cool. think the idea uh, was for us, each of us to have a stable, a latest, and like a, and a hacker version. Isn't that yeah, it? you should each have three, at least. Okay. If you need more, you know, uh, at, at your own uh, discretion. <laughs> um, so, Ken, you might actually want, well, no, we'll, we'll get into that later. Um, so... Uh, Chris Fair, do you have anything uh, else uh, non-sprint related you've been working on? Any Selenium news or uh, any of that? Nope, just working on the home screen. Okay, cool. All right, Ken, let's uh, give us an earful. Get get close so we can hear you. Yeah, um, I'll try to keep it simple. Um, so basically, under the uh, I'm working under the auspicious of this um, upgrades to TensorFlow 2.2 compat with TF Lite pull request, but uh, the PR is pretty, pretty uh, big, and I'm not sure what it's trying to accomplish. I know that Gez um, texted me a link to a derivative of that PR, I think, from another repository somewhere, and um, I think that has some additional work beyond this that supposedly was going to make everything work, but um, I had to hack it up to get it to uh, work with a TensorFlow light model, and then I realized it was still using a full-blown version of TensorFlow um, and just, you know, making TensorFlow Lite run with that. So it's like, you know, an upgraded TensorFlow 2.2, which may or may not work. I'll, I'll have to, that was, that's what I'll do next. But what was of interest to me <clears throat> was the support for the TensorFlow Lite model that I have now, right? Because I have a model that Jarvis gave me that's our precise model converted to TensorFlow Lite. And so, you know, what I wanted to do was get TensorFlow Lite runtime, which is not the full-blown TensorFlow, running on the Mark II. I actually wanted to also do that on the K210, and I've made progress on both fronts there. And then get the TensorFlow Lite runtime to run the TensorFlow Lite model, and then make sure that it's working. <clears throat> and that's what I spent the majority of the day doing today so now I have TensorFlow Lite run. I have a app, test application that runs TensorFlow Lite runtime, not the full blown TensorFlow Lite. And it uses our my, hey, Mycroft TensorFlow Lite model. And it works. So I thought that was good because. Yeah, that's great. That's working on our Mark II hardware? Yeah, yeah. Now it's not working with Mycroft Core. And I had to hack it all up to get it to even work. So now. You know, if that's an objective, I'll go back and try to get TensorFlow Lite runtime running with Mycroft Core. 
because like I said, the PR that I saw basically relies on the fact that TensorFlow Lite is a built-in portion of the full-blown TensorFlow 2.2. And TensorFlow Lite, the version I'm running is 2.5, so I had to modify some stuff to get it to run. Uh, so it's complicated, but that's what I've kind of been working on. Uh, I'm not sure where I'm going to go next. Uh, I'll figure that out um, tomorrow. Uh, and then um, eventually I'll get back to getting the TensorFlow Lite model running using the TensorFlow Lite runtime on the K210 dev board. So I've got TensorFlow Lite running on the K210 dev board. The problem is nobody built the Python bindings for them, and I'll have to build that. And so that's going to take some work. Um, but I wanted to see if I was wasting my time or if TensorFlow Lite runtime could indeed run our TensorFlow Lite model, and I've answered that question today. Um, it should be noted that once I get this running on the K210, that's kind of a gorilla port because really the right port would be to pull the CNN out and use the built-in hardware and put it there, if that makes yeah. sense. Yeah, so, correct. Um, but that's, you know, it's a phased approach, right? Get it running the way it is now and then pull out the CNN, but, you know, that kind of thing. So that's where I'm at. I've got TensorFlow Lite model running using TensorFlow Lite runtime on the Mark II. I think the next thing I'm going to do is try to get that integrated into, I, well, I guess I'll get the 2.2 TensorFlow PR to the point where it seems like I can get it working and then we could possibly commit it. Um, but again, keep in mind, these are building binaries. They're building wheels, you know what I mean? They're, so it's, yeah, that's how we deploy tense. That's how we put, that's how we deploy precise right now. Just, you know, is we build a wheel and uh, deploy the, the binary. Right, and it's part of that package, if you will, and the model is pulled in separately and put in a different right. place. I mean, I think the goal, right, is to get to a point where any iteration we do on Precise is just on the two two point framework in general, right, including you know being able to build light models off of it or that kind of thing. But it'd be nice to just be able to work off of the the modern framework work that's well supported, right. Yeah, keep in mind that that PR is not a core PR, right? That's a Lambda server PR, okay? Because that's where I checked out Precise and modified it to handle hyperparameters and all the stuff I had going in the pipeline. So that, and that's based on 1.3 and that builds models, right? Um, this would be where I go to the Lambda server and, and check out a new version of the Precise repository and use it to build a new wheel that could then be distributed as a binary, right? Yeah, that exactly. That's right. Sense. Yeah. Yeah. And we'd want to, and then we'd have to, you know, refactor whatever we need to in order to get all of the, um, the, the machine learning loop stuff, you know? Yeah. Working. And there may be some gotchas there, right? That surface in the back end that aren't relevant in the front end and things like that. Uh, there might be incompatibilities, who knows? But uh, yeah, I mean, um, if, if it seems like the objective of that pull request is to get a TensorFlow 2.2 environment running to build new models, because a lot of that work went into actually building new models and 2.2, right? Which you'll never right. see, you don't care about on the Mark II or on the target device, right? Right. So that's what I'm working on a lot to, uh, to sift through and understand how the different stacks work and, and what goes where and what actually are you doing. Uh, and I'm still, you know, learning some of that as I go. But again, today, the uh, the big breakthrough, which I've been working on for several days and finally happened about an hour or two ago, was I got the TensorFlow Lite model, so .tf Lite, running using the TensorFlow runtime, not TensorFlow 2.2 on a Mark II. Uh, th that's awesome. That's really good. And have you, did you take, uh, get any indication on uh, performance? It seems to work just fine. Oh, well, I mean, uh, in terms of like CPU load and. No, uh, because it's not, well, because it's not plugged into the Microsoft core framework, right? Sure. I guess that's fair. Yeah. yeah. So it's, so, I mean, I'm pretty sure it's going to be very simple. Well, let me put it this way. It should be similar unless there's big differences between 
the performance of TensorFlow 2.2 versus TensorFlow 1.3. I don't know that to be true. Well, I think that uh, one, I mean, it comes down to what they've implemented on the Pi in terms of libraries. My understanding is that, you know, they could be using the GPU uh, under the hood to implement and accelerate the, uh, you know, the calculations, right? Um, that, pre that presupposes the 1.3 binary we have isn't using the GPU, and I think it is. You think it is? Okay. I, think so. I don't know. I, don't I didn't know. think it was. I don't was. know enough about the build. See, now what we're talking about, and, and that's what I was getting at, is I think what we're really talking about is the build process for our precise binary, um, which includes uh, a binary version of TensorFlow, right? Right. So, so this is really like that PR really addresses more the build process of delivering a new binary. Yeah, and this is the stuff where you have to get in and start to really uh, relearn yeah. for ourselves. Yeah, and, and then I have to figure out how to get that deployed for the ARM, right? Um, and whether we want to completely override the old one or and replace it or add an, you know, have an either or, right? For people that might be having backward compatibility problems, things like that. I just don't know. Um, so that's kind of what I'm learning and where I'm at. But, but yeah, it just seems like that PR is going to be more oriented towards the whole build process and deploying the wheel. Right. Okay. But I was more concerned about because of another project, as you know, that I'm working on getting a TensorFlow Lite model running on TensorFlow Lite runtime. Do I have some hope in getting it running in 16 megabytes of RAM? Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's great. That's really good news. Thanks, Ken. Um, well, we'll check in as we go through the week and see how that progresses. Uh, that's, that's exciting for me. Me too, because I'm really going to be excited when I get TensorFlow Lite, our stuff running. Uh, I, I can get precise and a very shell version of Mycroft Core running on the K210 probably. With an yeah, app. that would be that would be great. Yeah, once I get the bindings for Python. Yeah, yeah, and then the, this will start to establish. You know, we can from here we'll start to establish a process for porting to new kinds of hardware, and and that's yeah. uh, that's a good place for us to be. So yeah, and and I think it remains to be seen whether we're going to be able to run Core as it stands in 16 megabytes of RAM. Oh, I, I wouldn't even expect that. Which is why I said that I could possibly get a really stripped down version of it, you know, that just does the basics uh, going. But, you know, I don't know. That was just a side project I may do at some point. Yeah. Well, I mean, if that could happen, that would be really great. Uh, my expectation now is that uh, if we could get, you know, because of the pipeline architecture and the message bus interface, if we could just partition off the uh, audio front end and the uh, wick word detection into a separate unit, right? And then we could use a, a less expensive main CPU. That's kind of the direction we're going, right? Yeah, in other words, that, that K210 dev kit becomes the next generation hat. Yeah, exactly, yeah. But it also has the wake word recognizer running on board. Exactly, yeah. Yep. 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 Cool, all right. Well, that seems like a uh, good progress for. Uh, yeah, it was. It was a lot, lot of work, but uh, and, and I'm learning more about TensorFlow than I ever wanted to know. But yeah. All right. Okay. Well, uh, I think we've been at it for long enough. So let's uh, check out, and we'll check back in tomorrow. See everybody tomorrow. All right. Bye. Thanks. <laughs>